having a great day. Today we are back in the kitchen. I love these videos. If you guys like these videos too, please hit the like button so I know you like them and I'll continue to bring them to you. Today's is a little bit different. We are gonna share the ultimate cinnamon roll cake. So this in my family is something that we like to make for birthdays, special occasions. My sisters do with her newest child coming soon. So I was making one of these practicing so it's ready to go when she has her kid. Um, this recipe is heavy, it's delicious, it's not good for you. There's nothing good for you in it at all, but it's a great special occasion recipe. And the other awesome thing is you don't have to wait for the cinnamon rolls to rise. You can literally make this in under an hour start to finish. And I think that's why I love it so much. Waiting for the cinnamon rolls to rise is the worst part, but you still get all of the deliciousness in this cinnamon roll cake. Let's talk ingredients to this yumminess. So the first thing you're gonna need is some flour. If you wanna, you maybe want it to be a little bit healthier. You could probably use some gluten-free flour, some wheat flour. It's not gonna taste quite as delicious, but whatever flour you wanna substitute will totally work. From there, we have sugar. You could probably substitute coconut sugar, and that would likely be a little bit better. Brown sugar. I know there's some subs for brown sugar, but none of them taste as good, so I would stick to the brown sugar. Then we've got vanilla. I've got butter baking powder, this is a key ingredient, cinnamon, which I love cinnamon, salt, and then we're gonna use some eggs and a little bit of milk. For the milk, you could substitute probably an oat milk, an almond milk, something of the same consistency as a milk, and it will probably taste as delicious. I can't make any promises, because I, when I make this, I just go full blown, and I go with all of the bad ingredients, or bad, quote, less healthy ingredients, I should say. Step number one is always preheat your oven. So by the time you're done mixing everything, you can pop it into the pan and dump it straight into the oven. So I'm gonna turn my oven on. This is recipe calls for preheating your oven to 350 degrees. So I'm just gonna turn my oven on. Here, click on. So now I know. The next thing you're gonna need is a 13 by nine pan. Um, I like to go with the non-stick pans. You could use a glass pan as well, but I always like to spray it. And I'm gonna use pan baking made with flour so it doesn't stick. This recipe is very sticky. You wanna make sure that you coat all of the sides and the entire middle so it'll come out. Then I just kinda set that on the stove, get it out of the way, and now it's time for the fun. So first, we're gonna start with our flour. The nice thing, oh, I'm already making a mess. When I bake, I, I make lots of messes. Um, you can ask Patrick. But the first thing we're gonna start with is three cups of flour, and I'm using my KitchenAid mixer. I actually got it as a present for my graduation from college. So, three cups of flour. The cool thing about this recipe is everything kind of just goes together. There aren't a lot of complicated steps. We're just gonna dump it all in, mix it all together, and then put it in the oven. So, level scoops. Scoop number one. And again, this is where you could substitute a different flour. May not have the same consistency, but I'm sure it would still be really delicious. So, three cups of flour. Next, we'll get the flour out of the way. We're gonna use it again for the topping, or the middle. Then we need a fourth a teaspoon of salt. I have this really bad habit, I never measure my salt. I just kind of do two pinches with whatever <laughs> baking that I'm doing, and it always seems to turn out okay. From there, this is where the sugar comes in. So we're gonna use one full cup of sugar. I know it's a lot of sugar, but like I said, this isn't something we make all of the time. So I can dump this in. Ooh, this is not, I've done this the wrong way before, where you hold the top and then the bag goes everywhere. Pretty close. So one cup of sugar, all in. Get the sugar out of the way. And then we're gonna go four teaspoons of baking powder. So here's our little teaspoon. We're gonna go four teaspoons of this guy. This is what's gonna give it the fluffiness, kind of like the cinnamon rolls. So you wanna make sure you do not skip this step. So I always like to make sure it's nice and flat. One. Last one. All right, so now it calls for the milk. When I use milk, I like to use whole milk. So we are gonna use a cup and a half of milk. Again, I actually don't do much dairy at all, uh, unless it's a special occasion in something like this. So if you do are the same as me and you don't really do dairy, it kind of upsets your stomach, I would definitely sub that out for an oat milk, an almond milk, or something along those lines. But I just added one and a half cups of whole milk. 
Now we're gonna add two eggs. And again, this is awesome. I'm just dumping it all in. I don't have to stop. I can just keep moving through versus some other recipes where you have to do things specifically in a specific order. So egg number one, egg number two, and then finally, we're gonna do two teaspoons of vanilla. All right, so next, once you've added all of that stuff, we're just gonna mix it together until it's lightly mixed. So that's gonna be our next step. So I like to close my KitchenAid mixer, make sure it's locked, and then we're just gonna turn it on stir. So very slow, just letting everything gently mix together. I like to put my hands over the side because sometimes when you have flour, it'll like to puff out. And then it's all over your kitchen and that's not good. All right, so now I have a melted stick of butter. So it calls for one half cup butter. After you've mixed everything together, we're gonna add that in. So I'm adding one half cup butter or one stick and it's melted completely. And now I'm just gonna mix it very slow. So you wanna stir it all together. You could do this with your spatula. I like to still use my mixer and just for about 30 seconds just until the butter fully combines with all of the rest of the ingredients. But again, you do not need to beat this on a high speed and you also don't need to beat it long, just until it combines. Once the butter is combined with the rest of the ingredients, it should start to be a little bit thicker and stickier. So then you're just gonna dump it into your 13 pan 9 pan that's already been greased. So that's the key. You do not wanna forget to grease your pan. So I'm just dumping it all in here. Sorry. I'm a righty, so I'm holding it with my left hand. Um, once you've cleaned the bowl, the next spot, or the next step, is going to be, I like to kind of shake it, so it fills the entire pan. You can see how thick it is, it's not just running. It's just kind of shaking, so the entire bottom of the pan is full. And now we're gonna make the topping to swirl, just like if it was a cinnamon roll. So once you've added your batter to the 13 by nine pan, soften two sticks of butter. We're gonna dump those in the mixer. They're not completely melted, they're just super soft. Then we're gonna add one cup of brown sugar. So hopefully I have enough. Let's see. I try not to keep this stuff in the house because when I do, I like to bake with it. When you don't have it, then you just don't do it. But for special occasions, it's fun. So there's a fourth, so I'm using a quarter of a scoop. So we're at a half. Oh yeah, we're gonna have enough today. That would've been a real bummer. Three quarters. And then there is our cup of brown sugar. Now you wanna make sure you add two tablespoons of flour. This will just keep it, it'll kind of make it more like a cinnamon roll topping and combine it all together and it won't be as runny. So two tablespoons of flour. And we're gonna add our cinnamon. So for our cinnamon, it's one tablespoon. I don't know if my tablespoon is that? So it'll be one tablespoon of cinnamon. And that's all the ingredients for the topping. So now I'm just gonna turn my mixer on. It should start to get light and fluffy. So you just wanna mix this until it's really well com combined, until it looks kind of almost light and fluffy, and it smells absolutely delicious. All right, once you're done mixing the butter, the brown sugar, the cinnamon, and the flour, it should kind of be really, it's not too thick, but it's kind of light and fluffy. So I just like to get all of it off of my blender blade so we don't lose any of the delicious topping. Set that aside. Now what we're gonna do is I like to use my tablespoon and I just take drops and we're just gonna put it, actually, I have something better. So we're just gonna kinda put it all over the batter and then we're gonna swirl it in. This is a really cool tool that one of my friends gave me so I don't have to touch anything or use a fork and a spoon to get it off because it's sticky. So we're just gonna continue to kind of spread it. You'll notice I like to usually go three lines of three scoops and then I know that it's gonna be pretty well balanced. If you have extra, you don't have to use it all. I like to use it all, but you don't have to. It's gonna be our, what would normally be in the middle of your cinnamon roll. It's gonna kind of be swirled throughout our kit. I start with that, and then you can use your spatula or a knife 
whatever works. I don't want to use a knife because I don't want to scratch my pan, so I'm going to use a spatula. And I'm just going to mix. You can see how thick it is. We're basically just sw oops, swirling it and mixing it into the batter. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. Um, I like to draw swirls. I like to go straight up and back, but you just want to make sure it's really mixed in. So everywhere has a little bit of the delicious cinnamon topping. All right, once you swirl all of that in, there's many different ways you could do it. I like to swirl it, and after making this a couple times, my family and I, we like to really swirl it in all, so it kind of makes it like, just almost like a cinnamon bread, but it's gonna taste more like a cake. So you can see that there's no more globs of topping, but it's all swirled in. So next, we're gonna put it in the oven, and we're gonna bake it for 28 to 32 minutes at 350 degrees. All right. So when you take it out of the oven, you're gonna see, you can see all the cinnamon swirled in. This is the first one I made this morning, so I actually made two, one for my parents and one for my sister. This one has gluten-free flour, so it's gonna be a little bit heavier. So the next piece that we're gonna do is we're gonna add on the delicious cinnamon roll topping, which is kind of like the icing that's gonna tie the cake together. All right, so for the topping, the final unhealthy part, we're gonna add two cups of powdered sugar. So I've already added one, so let's finish that. Like I said, I make a mess when I'm baking, but I'll clean it all up. Um, and I don't really do level scoops. So two cups of powdered sugar. So we'll set that aside. And then we're gonna do one teaspoon of vanilla. And then we're gonna add our milk. We're gonna do five tablespoons of milk. I usually start with three or four and make sure it's not too much. Once you add too much milk, you can't go back. Don't forget that. So let's start with three. Then I'll mix it together. You don't have to use your blender for this. It's super easy. You could use it if you really wanted to, but I don't. All right, so once your milk, your powdered sugar, and your vanilla are all mixed together, what I like to do is, it's not really written in the recipe, but I like to take my fork and just create holes. So that way, when I dump the glaze on top, it's gonna sink right into the middle. So not only do you get delicious glaze on top, you get it kind of inside of the cake, which is gonna make it moist and delicious. So now, we're gonna take all of our glaze, just dump it. We wanna to try to cover the entire cake. You can see it's more of a glaze than an icing. Just kind of all the sections. Okay, so once I've used all of it, kind of just shake it a little bit. And again, just try to get it to cover most of the cake. And now we have our finished product. I think something super important to remember, this is not healthy. This is not something I eat regularly. I probably haven't had it in at least a year. Um, but when I do make it, I go all out and I use all of the bad ingredients. And that's why I would say this is probably one of my favorite cheat meals or cheap desserts that I can think of. Homemade cinnamon roll cake. There's nothing that beats it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I love sharing our family's favorite recipe when it comes to birthdays or special occasions. Um, again, this is super unhealthy and that's okay. It's okay to have the balance and to be able to enjoy and kind of go off of your regular eating to celebrate special occasions. And I love to do that. And I'm so happy I could share this with you guys. If you like these cooking videos, if you like the nutrition stuff, please smash the like button. That will help me determine to continue doing these in the future. I really enjoy doing them for you and I'd also love to know if you guys like them as well. Feel free to comment below with whatever your favorite cheat dessert is. I would love to know that and also if you give this a try make sure to tag me Christy Ermo in any of your posts or your stories or whatever it is and let me know how delicious it is. I hope you guys have a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon.